Yes, I'm already editing this video, but I need an intro, so... Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Oh yeah. Alright, so Hyper 212 Black Edition. Well, when I went to the store, I actually asked for another one, the RGB version, but the store clerk gave me the wrong one and I already installed it, so I don't really feel like to take it back. So I overpaid a little bit for this one, but the only difference between this one and the RGB one is actually the fan, so yeah, I'm okay with that. So from the box, this uh, cooler supports basically everything that's in the market right now. So, yeah, let's open it up. Here's my trusty Exacto knife. Here we go. Right off the bat, look like a box of accessories. And here's our cooler. Hey, what's that thing doing? Here's our cooler itself. The fan is already installed. Nothing else in there. Alright. Whoa, look at that. So I had Hyper 212 in the past, the original one, and I really love that cooler. I actually bought that cooler more than once in the past. It's one of those coolers that's reasonably priced, affordable, and at the same time, really good performer. So this is the uh, modern or the current version of the same cooler, and it looks very much the same, with some improvements, of course. So, okay, so let's take a look at this accessory box. Let's see, right off the bat, this is the back bracket. Your support, all the CPUs that it supports in one bracket. And here's the um, uh, power cable that you can put two fans on it in a uh, you know, single CPU uh, fan plug. This is the bracket for the back fan if you decided to put a second fan on it. This is the installation bracket for AMD and Intel processors. These are the mounting pieces and the uh, thermal paste and some scoots and bolts and things. Cool. Look at that. It's one beautiful cooler for sure. Okay, let's get to the installation process then. There we got the, uh, let's see, warranty card. Here's the uh, user manual and uh, Intel LG A26. Here it is. MD M4, M3, just about everything that it will support. Cool. And I never used those mounting pieces before, but it's pretty neat where you put this metal piece in it that you will put in back of your motherboard and your the uh, the screws that you will put the pieces on to secure the cooler onto the uh, processor. I think it's pretty neat. And then on the motherboard, you'll take off the original bracket onto the back bracket that's put on the other side on the motherboard. This installation method is pretty cool, but there is a problem that I will show you in a minute.
Well, here's the uh, installation bracket. You just simply put the screw in to secure it in place. Alright, so let's put the uh, cooler on, just like that. But here's the issue I'm talking about. You see how it spins when you're tightening it up? Yeah, it should be okay. I mean, the motherboard always leave a certain amount of area for that to be, for that kind of stuff to be mounted on. But still, it makes you makes you worry if you're tightening it too much, it might damage the board. But it shouldn't. But still, it, it could have have some kind of a padding or washer between that piece and the motherboard itself but it doesn't there's the fan itself and let's put onto the side window is worry if it's going to be too tall but it fits just fine it's no problem in this case we'll work with it benchmark then well this is the stock cooler at uh, IDO 36 degree and here you see 79 degree that is after 10 minutes of stress test so 30, 79 degrees Celsius on the stock cooler so let's look at the uh, hyper 212 black edition so IDOs are around the same temperature not much less really and then after about 10 minutes the temperature is 58 degrees Celsius. Much, much cooler than a stock cooler. So, overclocking with this one should be just fine, which we will get to on the next videos. So, um, yeah, that'll be all for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time.